Hmm. Young lady, how I appreciate your visit. Always some, uh, always some treasure for old Francis here. What have you brought for my admiration today? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're looking for something from my collection? How very queer. Oh. Well then, let's hear it. An instrument. My instrument collection is immense, dear. You'll have to be precise. A delicate schooner with massive crystal and sails of warp steel. Oh. <laughs> How very poetic and intriguing. Very well, let me think. Let me think. Aha! Uh, yes, I do have such an instrument. And although I do not know its name, I figured it was quite rare. I wouldn't normally part with such a prized find, but mm -hmm. to tell you the truth, it has become quite bothersome to carry around. Its glass rods are delicate and fragile, and I need to clear a wide berth around it just to make sure it does not break. Just imagine what wonders I could tightly pack in the space it currently occupies. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very well, it's decided. I will give you the instrument to you. No. Not for free, though. This here raft is no charity. Usual consult the available errands for my specific reads. the instrument from my dream. How oddly familiar. How comforting. I think, Stella, that I once knew how to play it. My, my memories are hazy. Or rather, my memories are too many. And I know better than to trust them. So many lifetimes, far too many to fit in this tiny life of mine. But this instrument, I know it. I'm sure of it. Thank you for the gift. Here is a payment for your services. Leave me alone now. I have some practicing to and when you come back, perhaps I'll play for you. Daria and give her an instrument. What the hell is your problem? Get your ass here. ASAP. What the 
of shit are you all looking at, huh? I didn't do nothing wrong, right? It was that gosh darn psycho nutcase up there. She just lashed out at me. She's a lunatic. I've said it for years. You should just pump her full of pills and be done with it. No answer, huh? That's what I thought. Bunch of freaking losers. Huh, what? Oh, you're there. Finally freaking me. And what took you so long? Were you checking out the birds and the pretty clouds on the way here? Well, I could have used your help for once. Oh, you want to know what happened, don't you? I'll tell you what happened. You happened. I told you that she was unstable. I told you that she needed to be left alone. But no, you couldn't leave it to the professionals. Little Miss Perfect just has to stick her nose in everyone's business. She was already crazy to begin with, and then you give the, her that psycho instrument? Made with glass and sharp steel? Are you out of your goddamn mind? So yeah, I go in and I try to take it from her, and then, and then, whatever. This job is not about you, Stella. It's not about feeling good. It's about safety. It's about keeping us safe from these morons. And keeping them safe from themselves. What? Calm down? You calm down. I swear this freaking place. I can't take it anymore. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I won't take it anymore. Because I quit. Huh. You can all go to hell. And you have fun taking care of these idiots. So long, shit stain. And don't bother calling. I won't answer. Come quick. I heard all of that. That orderly, Jackie. He's always been a loose cannon, but he's gone too far this time. Things are really bad out here. He's the worst thing to happen to Overbrook since mandatory nighttime stop. I can't believe what he did to Daria. He's usually so quiet. She keeps to herself. She only had one thing, her music. And well, she fraught to protect it. What a mess. This place has really fallen on some hard times. We need better living conditions. We need fresh meals. We need proper medical care. We are here to be cured, not forgotten or ill-treated. I'm not waiting on the staff, not even on management. I'm taking matters into my own hands. But I'm gonna need some help. Possibly by someone with a bolt and people skills. What do you say? You don't need to answer. I just know you're already in. All right, let's start. Here's a list of potential candidates. We'll need to find capable people. We can't have this situation happening again. I'm counting on you. Is it just me, or do hospitals smell different? I know, it's weird to think about your nose and smelling stuff. When are you really using it? Most of the time, it's just there, not doing anything. I guess things just always smell, like medium smelly, you know? When it smells real good, or stupid, awful, your nose just tells you. Pretty much how noses work. Oh. No, I forgot to bring a book. I don't have anything to entertain myself with. Time to use the old brain. Oh. What do you have for me, old friend? Here, Brain, I'll think about chickpeas for a few minutes. Thanks, Brain. The line is always long at the hospital. That's just part of the journey. Once inside, that's another journey. Then they're inside you, and that's another one. I'm just saying, your life is just a series of journeys.
supposed to train that guy over there. I really don't feel like it. I've been really tired over the past week or so. I can't sleep at night. Let's just hope he gets the hang of the job without my help. Working in this mine since before I was born. My mom worked here. My dad worked here. My granddad. Well, you get it. I don't know if I would ever leave. Mm -hmm. I work at the Overbrook Hospital. In the kitchen? Mm -hmm. I see. Cooking is like hitting rocks? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Those two things sound very different. Mm -hmm. You do make a compelling argument. You sure have a way with words. And that voice. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sold on the idea. And I'm sure all the other workers will be too. Trouble is, we can't just up and leave. We need people to cover our posts. Wait. Wait. I got it. Wait. No, I just lost it. Wait. Wait, I got it. What if instead of people, we use dummies? We just need to dress up scarecrows filled with hay and stuff in our work clothes. They'll look like regular employees, but they won't move. I'm sure the Raccoon Inc. Mining Corporate won't know the difference. Plus, as an added benefit, dummies don't need to eat. Fewer lunch breaks, more productivity. A win-win situation. They won't talk back either. They'll be the perfect employees. We just need to find some material to stuff into those dummies. So, you should go and get everything. Some wood, linen, and carrots. Yeah, that could work. Oh, this is a totally great plan. Can't wait to start hitting food and making real culinary art. Mm -hmm. Come back when you have all the material. Uh -huh. So? Hey there. So? Good job. You got it all. I'll get everything together and we'll make the dummies. We'll make them look real. Raccoon Inc. Mining Co Corporation won't be able to tell the difference. When they realize that all the mining operations have stopped, it'll be too late. We'll be free and ready to make some nice cannoli. Thanks for the new exciting career opportunity. See you in the kitchen at Overbrook. lonely at all. Mm. It's fine. I got this little shack. My things are in there and my toothbrush, my dry socks. Mm. I've got it going on. Yeah, my life is pretty great. Mm. It's good you keep checking up on me. I'm totally fine. 
Been fine for a while now. Oh. Nothing says fine like living out here, next to an empty mansion, sleeping in this tiny shack. Oh. No running water, no electricity, hearing the squirrels having fun at night. Oh. It's the best. Oh. Okay, I give up. I'm lonely. Oh. So very lonely. I hate being by myself. No one listens to my jokes. Oh. Knock, knock. Who's there? No one. It's terrible. Oh. Gotta help me out. I might start knitting at any time. You got to find me a better job than this. Oh. I need a better roof than this one. I can see the stars, but birds are can also watch me sleeping. Oh. See? That's interesting. Oh. I've never heard of Overbrook. And it comes with free room and board? Oh. Well, I can't say no to that. I've already spilled the beans on being miserable and lonely. Coincidentally, I also spilled beans on my sleeping bag, though the timing couldn't be more perfect. Oh. Yeah, got me. I need to start being less honest. Okay, I'll go. Oh. Let me pack my things and say goodbye to my woodland friends. I'll meet you at Overbrook. sandwich every day. Tuna with lots of mayo oh. and a little bit of lettuce and whole wheat bread. I just love it oh. so much. I add the lettuce at the last second. I want that incredible crunch when I bite into it. You know where you'll find me at my lunchtime? Oh. That's right, eating that tuna sandwich. lose our jobs next week. Don't tell anyone. Big secret. In one of those containers, there's a bunch of robots. Robots that might replace us. We are literally shipping robots that will take our job. Pretty depressing. Oh. Ah, I'm a bit busy right now, miss. One of my guys got his hands cut off yesterday. Yeah, I know. Oh. There's quite a bit of paperwork. If Mike wants his hospital bills paid, he needs to sign this thing from the corporate office. Pretty boilerplate legal stuff, oh. saying Mike won't sue if they pay his medical bills. Anyway, the doctors are reattaching his hands right now, so I'll be able to sign it soon enough. I know. Oh. Apparently doctors can do that. What was the name of his doctor again? I don't remember his name, but I know where he lives. Oh. Why? Because he keeps saying it over and over. Very proud of his penthouse in the old central district. Oh. That was weird. As in the operating room and as a representative of the company, the doctor kept talking about his hot tub and his million dollar watch, oh. reminding us he was the best doctor in the whole wide world. All of that while reattaching Mike's two hands. It's pretty wild. Oh. I was just thinking, can you stop talking and concentrate on reattaching my buddy's hands? Anyway, Mike's gonna be okay. He'll be back at work soon. Oh. The company only offers five sick days a year and he already took a couple to take care of his daughter. Hands or no hands, Mike will be in tomorrow. Oh. And I guess his doctor will be in a penthouse old central district. What an odd world.
looking for a doctor? Well, look no further. You found him. You found me. Mm -hmm. I'm in a world. Uh, I am a world-renowned hand surgeon. I've been on talk shows. I've been recognized in malls. Oh. I own a 600-gallon hot tub. Always tropical and ready for when this doctor comes home. After a hard day of doing what surgeons do, I need to relax my hands in warm, bubbling water. Mm. That is the life of this prestigious doctor. I'm known for my impeccable surgery skills and for being punctual. I am always on time because of this watch. Mm. Costs so much money, I don't want to say. It's encrusted with rare diamonds. It's a triple retrograde turbul turbulin. Well, I can see I've lost you there. I bought it as a gift for myself after my fourth marriage. Now back to you. You need a doctor? Mm. For Overbrook? I thought that place closed down. And it's so far away. Mm -hmm. Why would I ever work in a place like that? For money? I'd do it for more money. Mm -hmm. No one ever says no to more money. I just love buying myself new things. When I'm not at work, I shower myself with expensive gifts. Mm -hmm. Such is my nature. I would consider it for, hmm, 10,000 glims mm -hmm. up front. No bi, no bi weekly payments. Glims only. Mm -hmm. A one time offer. Deal? Well, well. I can hear the money sloshing around in your pockets. Fork it over if you want me to work for that uh, awful overbrook. Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Well, just like that, you got yourself a deal. I'll start prepping my move. Mm -hmm. I'll tell my job that I'm moving up to a better gig. Hmm. Overbrook doesn't sound too exciting. Mm -hmm. I might just lie and say I'm going to a more reputable hospital. Well, see you around. Thanks for the money. Thank you so much for helping out. This really means a lot. We might as all just be patient. Hmm. We might all just be patients here, but that doesn't mean we have to be treated this way. This just goes to show you, sometimes good people just need to step in. People not doing their jobs just boggles the minds. Lives are literally in your hands. It's just so... Getting what? I'm getting worked up here. Whew. So things are already looking up. The kitchen is making some strides in the food department. Mm -hmm. No one has gotten food poisoning in the past few days. So that's a plus. I saw some fancy pants doctors doing the rounds. Mm -hmm. One of them was really obnoxious, but that's better than no doctors. Oh, and you might have noticed that there isn't random trash just littering the halls. Maintenance is keeping the grounds clean. Mm -hmm. That just about does it. I won't keep you. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy around these parts. are here. I asked for you. I asked the guards. No, the the guardians? 
This room felt like a cage, and now I am told that I am free. Free! Uncertain. The freedom might be a trick, I thought. A sinking of the light, a twisted mirror, uh, no. You are here. Magic. I am... I... Ah. Thank you for coming. I am not as I was when we last met, Bella. You see, I am adrift in the ocean. Of my own making. And I've come to realize that... That... I cannot produce the words. I shot them over the endless expanse of water. Where they die down to whispers and insignificant ripples. And... And... I believe that you can still hear them. You are the one who listens, who knows how to listen. You can illuminate the ocean's starless nights. The instrument you have gifted me, and... Uh, you remember my song, don't you? Please go outside and play it. It shall guide me. I believe you will understand. When you first climbed up the tower, you saw only a fragile thing, deserving of care and empathy. You did not see the steely bonds with which a giant had steeled me, and neither did you see the tumultuous sea underneath, and how it grew angrier and angrier in accordance to the giant's fickle spirits. No, you saw the pain and neglected the wound. It is unsurprising, then, that you were ready for the giant's last dying spasms, for his encounter with demons of his own that would break his will. Unsurprising and understandable was your confusion, when the invisible or outraging sea swept me away, and where, unmoored and waited, as I was, I sunk to the deepest depths. Steps I knew well and had hoped to never visit them again. Within them roam all manners of vicious beasts, tooed, fanged, and scaled. Hungry always for suffering and pain, for doubts, memories, and minds. Every single morsel. To survive, I thrashed and I failed. So much so that I managed to shed my bonds along with strands of myself. And the beasts, as expected, promptly devoured them. Lightened as I was, I floated back to the surface, far from the beasts. It was there that gentle hands plucked me from gentler sea. And there, as I was lying surrounded by wispy figures, neither good nor bad, I contemplated an image that had been burned in my empty mind. For through the nests of the beasts, a strange glimmer caught my eye, remnants and wrecks from past voyages containing treasures of a past long forgotten. What did you do? Seriously, spit it out. Dara seems to really have responded to you. I've never seen her like that. So vibrant. I don't know what you did, but it did wonders. And another thing, what's going on with Overbrook? I worked here for ages and it never changes. Odd things have been happening ever since you came around. One minute everything is going to shit. 
The power is constantly going in and out. We've got rats as big as dogs. It's always raining. Then, poof, things are turning around. They're still bad, but less bad. You know, it's like, I still can't swim, but I don't have monster-sized rats trying to eat my feet. But you know what I think? I think all these changes, they're related to you and that weird looking vending machine. Don't make that face, I mean it. Listen, I've never used it personally. I don't believe in money and the concept of spending said money. But whenever you use it, weird stuff happens. More good than weird. Still, it's pretty weird. So I'm thinking, you should just go all out and buy a bunch of stuff from the vending machine. Really, let yourself loose. And if it magically brings new life to this place, who am I to stand in its way? Also, it might cheer up Daria and everyone else in this depressing hellhole. I won't keep you. Enjoy your snacks at the vending machine. Fingers crossed for the weird good stuff. One memory is so deeply ingrained I could never forget it. The day I started hearing the noise. Faintly at first, then louder and louder yet. Flip, flop. Distant drops of water that only I could hear. Perhaps I saw it as a sign that I could no longer fit within the warm confines of the family home. And so I left seeking the source of the noise. In the beginning of my quest, the land was gentle. I remember the tender grass and the soft wind. I kept following the sound of the droplets, all the while paying little attention to the waters rising at my feet. Soon enough, I was wading through a murky and dark ground, surrounded by a thick fog and yelps and growls and glimmers. From this period, there is not much to remember, a vagrancy that lasted an eternity. No dive can ever restore these memories. They have been wiped clean, kicked to the bone. It is as though they never existed, as if fallen through cracks in time. Still, they were, 
The mud and scratches bear witnesses. The waters are so high now, nothing pierces them. An endless ocean, unbearable calm. The murk has dissipated and the water is clearer than it has ever been. The plip plopping has stopped. And so, with nowhere to go but down, I dive. But I must do so carefully, delicately, lest I disturb the silt that has, through the eons, set into a beautiful but fragile blanket. That sometimes doctors forget stuff inside your body when they do surgeries. They once found a watch inside a person's knee. What? You don't believe me? I'm telling you, it's true. My best friend's cousin twice removed told him, and then he told me. That's like three people right there. It has to be true. wreck lies hidden among the reefs and the mud. Only a faint glow betrays its presence. It lies on its side, abandoned and forgotten. But as I get closer, the noise hits me. Voices happy and sad, playful bangs and clangs. Within the ship live a great many deal of faceless shades. Mother and father and unruly brothers and sisters. A cacophony that is enticing and dreadful at once. One of the shapes escapes me. It is a uh, protiform and, and tunnel, insubstantial. It has a go uh, it has a ghastly quality that I cannot easily understand, and it seems to actively resist focus. It takes some convincing for me to accept it for what it is, an echo of a previous self, remnants of undevoured by the depths, unaware of them even, a treasure of incommensurable value. I met it with a cautious curiosity.
and suddenly I am filled with sadness, for I realize I remember one essential truth that perhaps I would rather not remember. The tableau before me exudes a chaotic happiness, a family brought together by conflicts and laughter. If at any point some all-powerful painter were to judge the tableau and remove the ghastly lone shade from it, nothing of the composition would be affected, unnoticed and untouched. After an eternity of drifting, this place took me in. You would not have recognized me. Sunburnt, cracked, bursting at the seams. A mind bloated with the muddy thoughts of the self and of the other. Useless detritus brought back from the depths. They bound me here with coarse moorings, and when I roared, I thrashed and raved. They only tightened the bonds, brutish methods, but as I came to understand, if efficacious ones. And while they could not see the raging ocean, with its winds and tempests, and its waves that I was forced to breathe in, leaving me hurt and sickly, they seemed to understand that I should not be allowed to sink. This was a trip I would not survive. Things have changed now. The new caretakers, they are different. Nary a sound. They move graciously. They wear soft gloves. 
and velvety shoes. They secretly busy themselves around me, an unseen army of shades and ghostly servants, always making sure that I never go wanting. Stella, there is you. Moorings, but a different kind. You are the only one who understands the sea. That is not something to be scared of, but a miracle to be celebrated. A reliquary of strange and alien terrors. Over overwhelming in their otherworldly beauty. Only you can explore this strange world with me. An anchor, a buoy, and a lifeline all at once. Thank you, Stella. gonna buy that. You stole my precious moral sticky dog. Mm. I had my name written on it and everything. Just my luck. Half the time they get stuck coming down the machine mm. because they're so sticky. Oh, I wasted so much time and effort trying to get that delicious toffee. And you just get it on the first try. Mm. Not fair. Give it back. Please? 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 Listen. Mm. We can trade for it. Okay? Mm. Thank you so much. Merle's sticky toffee is the only thing that soothes my toothaches. Ah, sweet teeth toffee. I can barely recognize this place. It's a good kind of beige now. It is still just a hospital. Mm. And see, I told you that vending machine was magic or something. I'm happy and all, but mm. it's super creepy. What? An all-powerful snack dispenser capable of changing the laws of physics. Mm. You don't find that? That's creepy? You're right. Mm. What am I even saying? That's not possible. I probably just need glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. I'm just blind now. Mm -hmm. Overbrook is just a totally normal hospital, and I can't see properly. I won't question it any longer then. Thank you, I suppose. Oh. You gotta help us out. The kitchen's gross. I got nothing to work with. The pans are older than my grandmother. They look like they've been through the Great War. I know I'm not a real crook, but I do have principles. You gotta find a way to help us out. Oh, wow. Sorry for lashing out. I know it's not your fault. Jeez, it's not even your problem. Listen, do me a favor. We need to get some proper cooking going on. We've been serving what looks like dog food until now. Not the rich fancy kind, more like the discount bin stuff. We don't have any fresh produce. Mm. It's all dried up and non-perishable. Even Raccoon Inc. Mining Corporate wasn't that cruel. They knew that feeding your employees was at least good business. Mm. A ration a day keeps the scurvy away. However, this is just unacceptable. I've been making some of the worst food I've ever made in my life here. Mm. Need your help. 
I need you to find some fresh ingredients and a variety of stuff too. I can't be making bread with old newspapers and toilet water. It just doesn't work. I don't want to make these people sicker than they already are. They need proper meals that'll help them get better. To give them life juice. So here's a list of things I need. Don't skip on the good stuff now. It would really help me out. I'm making the slop and it doesn't taste like anything. I'll take a breather and I'll promise I'll be calmer when you come back. Thanks. But you've already got the goods. Now this is good stuff. We can definitely do something with these. I'll start working on getting french fries on the mm. menu. And in a few days, we should have misula and, fe and fisherman's pie. Oh, and I'll even try my hand at a nice vegetable stir fry. Patients have been complaining about the food for a while mm. now. Well, at the very least, these new dishes make them stop. Oh, I can't wait for Gertrude or Gary to taste these meals. No more, your food tastes like wet socks. Mm. Or my granddaughter makes tastier food than this. Well, I better get to it. Thanks again. Stella. One Daria has expressed her desire to receive your visit. Regards, Overbrook's caretaker. It is done. Stella, you are here. I feel... I... How do you... You like my paintings? I... I need your help, Stella. Another dive away from here. You know what I mean, do you not? The doctors, they... They will not say a thing. Not if I'm going with you. They know better than to protest. They know what it all means. It is... Let us go. The air is different. We've reached it, have we not? Then let us leave. The air, it has this quality. Yes, I understand now. All the pieces of the self that were lost, well, they ought to be here. You look dejected. Do not. You knew all along, Stella. You had to. Did you think it would not end here? No, I cannot be fooled like the others. The laws of this ocean have no bearing on me. Hmm. 
You traveled with me, Stella, and I am grateful for that. Of all, only you saw the beauty within the depths. The wonders that have amazed and alienated me. Now, I am not to be pitied. Such brilliance is a gift like no other. And I am happy that, with me, you could glance at it. <sighs> you see it now, do you not? My transparency, my lack of substance. I am not getting better. Since the storm, every day ribbons of me falling into oblivion. I have lost too much. I am incomplete beyond repair. Below the critical mass required for continued existence. Echoes of echoes can only last so long. Goodbye, Stella. Have I been enjoying my time at Overbrook? Not really. Everyone is so mean to me. They keep calling me names, like Trashy or Piles, you know? Mm -hmm. Names relating to pick up tr picking up trash. You probably already figured that out. I do enjoy picking up other people's trash, but it still hurts. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when people call me mean names. Very few people like that, I suppose. This job would be great if they would stop talking trash mm -hmm. to me. Oh no, I'm the one doing it now. I just want them to treat me with a little bit of respect. Or, at the very least, not talk to me. Would you mind telling them to stop? That would make my days a bit better. I've got a hard time remembering where it, which spices go where. That's the difference between thyme and rosemary. Besides the name, obviously. Mm. Do I have to taste them to figure that out? I don't want to taste weird food plants. Mm. Hello again. Would it be possible to take a small bite of you? Mm. 
I see. Well, I'll be around if you change your mind. Hmm. I got hired by an external firm to do some cleaning here. I don't actually work for the hospital, but I only work Ooh. here. That's a bit strange, ain't it? They don't get benefits or anything like that. If I get hurt on the job, they just fire Ooh. me. The other day, Marcus slipped on some glue and broke his wrist. The hospital didn't even want to treat him. He just went home. I haven't seen him in a while. I just know he's not on the calendar anymore. Ooh. Well, I better look out for any fluid or something. Gotta be extra safe out here. I hope we find her soon, Flo. Hmm. Nurse, nurse, my wool coat is sick. Yes, my wool coat. I put it in the dryer and now it's hmm. different. It's smaller and it's sick. Can you tell me what my next steps are? Antibiotics? Hmm. Is surgery out of the question? A brand new wool coat? I need your expertise. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm in trouble now. I ate a Danish on the way here. I can feel it going down my hmm. belly. It had a cheese filling with a raspberry squirrel. It was a pig boy, too. This lion better not be too long. Oh. Why do they sometimes tell you not to eat or drink anything before an appointment? Is it because doctors don't want to eat their lunches? Like, are they afraid that food will run out at the grocery oh. store? So if they tell everyone not to eat 24 hours before, they can do their groceries without all the crowds? They can have their pick of the best foods mm. in the world. That does not make... That does make a lot of sense now, if that I say it out loud. They got me this time. Next time, though, I'll eat to my heart's content before my appointment. Trashy doesn't like being called names? Well, that's news to me. I really thought we had a rapport. Hmm. I would produce trash, he would pick it up, and I would call him trash related name. We had this whole bit. I'm a bit shocked, really. Oh. I'll try and be better at reading social cues next time. I just feel awful now. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Well, money has always been the answer for me. What does Trashy? I mean, well, I don't actually know oh. his name. I will find out first thing in the morning. In the meantime, I shall do something nice for him. Hmm, I got oh. it. You should go give him something healthy. That always cheers me up. An apple, maybe? Oh. I know it sounds expensive, but it's organic and so healthy for you. I eat like 12 a day. That's why I'm so vibrant and fit. Oh. I'm sure he'll love it. He always rambles on about eating healthy and producing his own food. Who has time for that? Oh. Not me, but you know, everyone's got a thing. So here is some money, just in case. Just go see him with an apple. Mm -hmm. I'm sure things will be fine after that. Thanks. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. What? Yeah, I don't want your dumb rich people, Apple. He thinks a fruit bought with dirty money will make things better. He's completely delusional. But look at the scenery. There's a garden here now. Nature completely overtook these ruins. This looks amazing. So beautiful and oh, just smell the air. So fresh. This is way better than some stupid fruit or whatever. I heard rich people apples were actually made of recycled apples. Mixed in with like dirty magazines, little rocks, used water and etc. You know, the gross stuff. What I enjoy about rich people is the way they spend their money mm -hmm. on dumb things. Well, well, I don't know how this overgrown garden popped up. Mm -hmm. Sure makes my little feud with the doctor pretty inco inconsequential. He can call me whatever he wants. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I got a garden now. I'm clearly better than him. Whoa, look at all this splendor. Mm -hmm. Nature really makes things better, doesn't it? Oh, you! 
You're that errand person from earlier, always running around and doing things for others. Oh. Listen, you're the one that got me here, which is great now, but I have an issue. Listen up, whatever your name oh. is, I didn't end up selling my penthouse. The market is quite unstable right now. No, no, no. Oh. I don't want you to house sit for me. That's not it. My problem is my collection of exotic birds. Mm -hmm. My birds can't be alone for too long. They get antsy. Plus, some of them have, let's say, special needs. Mm. I need you to find some kind of bird babysitter. A bird sitter. Someone who likes wings and beaks, I suppose. Mm. Why can't I do it? Well, I'm a rich and busy doctor. Mm. I can't leave in the middle of surgery with my hands all bloody. If I leave to feed my birds, who will clean my bloody hands when I'm not at the hospital? Mm. Do I need to bring an assistant with me at all times? Just because my birds need to be fed every day? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That assistant has a life of her own. That assistant has things to do, places to go. Why are you making my assistant do all this extra work? Mm -hmm. You need to think of other people for once in your life. So listen, you need to do two things. Mm -hmm. First up, you need to buy specialty treats for my precious birds. Cherries are your best bet. It's probably the only good thing in this world. Mm -hmm. Next, and this is tricky, so listen carefully. You need to find someone who is good with birds or lizards or whatever. Someone to be at my house once a day to care for my mm. army of birds. Another doctor was telling me about a service in Ed Edinburgh Lane. Something something Lizard King? I wasn't really listening. Mm. Maybe you can look into it. I need my birds to be babysat and pampered. Is that too much to ask in these modern times? <laughs> loud clangs coming from the deck last night. Are you working on the secret project? Oh. Well, you should probably look around the boat. Something might be broken.
what the? Oh, Stella. Um, it's um, you see, it's not what it looks like. I was um, I was. Oh heck, yeah, I'm living here. I didn't have anywhere else to go. I certainly can't go back to that crappy hospital. Not after what happened with Daria. So I sneaked in and this place seemed empty, so I figured it wouldn't hurt anyone. What, it's your friend's house? Well, how was I supposed to know that? And anyway, she's not even using it. I bet she's in some, I bet she's on some fancy vacation, right? She's lounging around in one of her 50 villas. Some people have everything, while us mooks have nothing. So you know what? If she wants her house back, she'll have to kick me out herself. Yeah, that's it. I'll show her that. Hmm. What? She's... Oh. Shit. I'm... I'm sorry, Stella. I didn't know. I'm talking too much... I'm talking too darn much again. Oh. Hmm. Leave me a minute and I'll pack my stuff and get out of your way. I know when I'm not welcome. What? I can live here? You do that for me even after all I did? It's, uh... Well, if you insist, I'll find some spot out of the way. I really don't want to sleep in the streets again. Yeah, you'll see. I can pay you back by helping around the boat. Jackie's not a freeloader. I don't need your help. You need mine. Yeah, just like old times. And, you know, I... Thanks, uh, Bella. Thanks, Bella. Well, look at what we have here. An offering for the Lizard King. Good. Well, tell me what you brought. Your hands are empty, but your promise is enticing. Birds? Lots of birds? It's a, in a sanctuary in the city? How wonderful. This is indeed a treat. You sure know how to shower your king with presents. They'll be written into law by royal decree. These birds will become royalty. They will be pampered and spoiled. They will be kings and queens of the animal kingdom. This is indeed a grand day. Huzzah!
very good. Well, that settles that. Thank you for taking care of my precious birds. I miss them so much. <laughs> On an intense day, I got a call in the early hours. They needed my expertise. They said to come in right away. I did. I did. I'm a real doctor. Totally real. They didn't just dial the wrong number and catch me by mistake. No, ma'am. Yep, I'm gonna do fine. How hard can this be? <laughs> Doctors on TV aren't real. Did you know that? I'm sure didn't. For a while, I just thought I was doing something wrong. I wasn't getting into complicated love triangles with my co-workers. I wasn't embroiled in a high-stakes murder conspiracy. I was just being a doctor. The way they taught me in school. It was odd. Maybe it's a different kind of doctorate. Like over the pond or something? Thank you again. There's work to do, but this is a good start. We're gonna do a lot of good with this food. Thank you again. If you want some service, line up the window. Oh. If you want to be a chef, you gotta have a boatload of cloths. Dry cloths. Wet cloths. Oh. Wiping cloths. And it's gotta hang from your apron so people know you mean business. Cooking business. Oh. That's what being a chef is all about. Looking great. Stella, this boat is bonkers. It's got so much shit. A kitchen? Individual houses, but not for me. I'm not a patient, remember? A mother blasting cow. Even a garden. What kind of boat has a garden? With real dirt. Where did you get the dirt? Is it some kind of refuse? Is it... Oh, Stella. Do, do you grow your vegetables in our poop? What? I don't know how that shit works. Do I look like a farmer? Isn't dirt like poop and half-eaten worms? Anyway, I told you I could help around the boat and the field has given me a genius idea. Follow me, all right? the field. Now hush just for a minute. Listen. Hmm. Shit, are all boats this noisy? It really worked better in my mind. Hmm. You were supposed to hear how silent it was and then think something's missing here. And I'll be all like, yeah, right. You know what's missing? And you go, no, please do tell me, Jackers. And then I'd say, bees. That's right, bees, you know, little furry critters. That's right, bees, you know, little furry critters eat flowers, make honey. Mm -hmm. But don't piss them off. They got a sword up their butts, literally. Mm -hmm. Maybe not literally, but anyway. So yeah, walking around the field, I thought about my grandfather. He was a kind man, really. He pretty much raised me. Mm -hmm. You see, daddy and mommy weren't too much in the picture. Happy Jack, he had a little farm, nothing fancy, but he had bees. They helped with the field, plus they gave us some honey. So that's how I want to contribute. Honey would be great, wouldn't it? All right, get some paper out and listen up. Bees, they can't just sleep anywhere. They need a house. In the jargon, a bee house is called a hive. That's with an H. So you take some wood and some other stuff, and you just arrange it like so and so. Yeah, that looks good enough. Go ahead and build us a nice bee hive or a bee house, and I'll show you how to use it. Nice! 
What a beaut! As always, Stellar's great work. That's great work, actually, that the bees have already started living in their hive. Now remember, bees eat flowers. Well, at least they did at Gramps' point. Maybe they can eat some other stuff. Mm -hmm. A lawful honey? Yeah, better not mess with the proud art of honey making. Anyway, there's a trick to keeping your bees happy. If you want to give, if you want them to give you honey, make sure to keep some mature plants around the hive. When the hive is nice and plump with honey, you uh, get in there real good, and then you just swipe the sweet sticky bounty super quickly. Mm -hmm. Got it? If you have any questions, just ask. Oh, and that makes me think of something else. You know me, I don't need much. I could pretty much sleep anywhere. But I've been thinking, you know, as your assistant, living in the same common area as the patients. Well, it's a bad look, ain't it? I really think you should build some kind of staff room. Nothing fancy, just somewhere to lay down after a shift. Four walls and a roof. I'm not a guest here, after all. Anyway, just a thought. I hope you can get to it. See ya. 